Welcome back to Usaif and Air Sport Night Superstars. It's time for the last game of the day between the marksmen and the yodhas. The game is Dota 2. Welcome back to the Youth Cypher League. My name is Vivek, with me is Cloudex, and you're watching the Yodas on the Radian facing off versus Marksman on the Dyer. Marksman sitting comfortably at top of the table, leading by a comfortable 39 seconds. points. And they even, I mean, the lead's only get, gotten better after today's game of Contact, where they edged out now. the Yodas in what was a rather one sided affair on Inferno. Your thoughts on how Dota is going to take place? Well, Marksmen have been the kings of Dota so far at Cypher League Season 1 and I see no reason for them to stop right now. Although they are coming in after a bit of a break, they are coming yeah. into the new meta as well. We haven't seen them really perform in the new patch just yet. I'd love to see what they've got up their sleeves. Here's the mark the of, a, of a good team is one that can adapt from the changing times. And you know, Marksmen are going to show us what they're made of here. Yoda's on the other man. side. If they ever had a good shot at taking down the juggernauts of the tournament, this is it. New patch, new playstyle, new heroes, and hopefully new victors as well. Eleven's going to be doing the draft here for Yodas on the Radiant, while Marksmen are going to be led by Pashu. If I'm not mistaken, they're sw sw switching things up here because I don't remember Eleven doing the draft for Yodas the last time around, but he is, of course, the Five most experienced player remaining. right now. Cyberhen has played with, uh, or formerly known as Cyberhen, Eleven has played with teams like Oblique Gaming back in his heyday. And how fitting is it that he's back to play on the main stage once again? Yes. It does. They'll start with the Visage and the Ancient Apparition ban out here. Turn yeah, I'm not too sure why the Ancient Apparition ban would probably indicate that they were looking at uh, something like a Necrophos and uh, Marksman respond and ban out the Necrophos themselves. Yodas are also going to ban out that pesky Night Stalker. I mean, I've had many a conversation with players after the games of the Usipher League and all of them t tell me just one thing. Somebody picks a Night Stalker against me and it feels useless. I mean, all the effort I've put into warding feels almost useless. Your wards look small, Five they amount to nothing, remaining. and all that gold and positioning and effort you put into getting wards in control amounts to nothing versus a Night Radiant's Stalker. Marksman, they're pick. banning out the clockwork. Uh, just a general good four position hero. Yodas still hanging around in uh, the older patch here. They're going to open with the Lich. You know, what's interesting about this particular game is that the Morphling, this is actually the first game of yeah. the league with the Morphling being introduced to the Captain's Mode pool. Um, that Ancient Apparition ban, it could be geared towards a potential Morphling pickup here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure Ten if uh, that's what Yodas have, have up their sleeves here, but it's something that we're curious Five to see because we were remaining. having conversation with some of the players outside as well Dyer's over Cup of Tea. And, you know, they were talking about how they believe Morphling is most likely a support pick as opposed to a core, yeah. primarily because of a hero that has three active spells and then can steal another three from uh, based on his ultimate. Mm -hmm. Why do you want someone doing that much, still using his right clicks as his primary source of damage? It's a fair way to approach the game and Morphling Ten has been run seconds. as a support in the past, the strength Morphling in particular. Let's see if that's what's going to come out here. Five but Marksman will pick themselves up an Earth Shaker. Yeah, I mean, they've run this numerous times on Red. They've had good success. Uh, by picking up the Earthshaker for him. Small uh, noteworthy change to the Earthshaker is that there is no instant damage just by an Echo Slam itself. There have to be units for the Echo Slam to really do any damage. Uh, it doesn't do damage just if you press it near a hero, but the stun is still there. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of small but significant nerves to the Radiant's amount of damage that the Echo Slam pick. could do based Brew on the number Master. of units in the vicinity. Marksman though, they're gonna pick up the Brewmaster. Uh, Brewmaster is something that Liquid do like to run a lot, especially in uh, the top plane, uh, which makes me wonder if this is a four position Earthshaker coming out by uh, the Marksman here. Uh, I haven't seen Red play the Brewmaster, but that's not to say he can't. Either way, Brewmaster, he's is absolutely useful in these team fights. And uh, he's even got this ridiculous level 25 talent where uh, I think it's minus 65 second primal split cooldown. Yeah. What? Yeah, 65 seconds shaved off your primal split. That's his level 25 talent. So some of the level 25 talents in uh, 7.07 are actually Ten quite ridiculous. Seconds. You have Buck attacking six heroes <laughs> at full attack speed. You Morphling gets two waveform charges. Um, then 
Sixty-five uh, seconds off of Primus Split, man. I think that's that. That Good one takes the cake. Yeah, it takes opinion. the cake. It does. And uh, all the more reason to consider a Midas even after you pick up your fling dagger. Mm. Maybe who knows? Uh, Monkey King still getting banned out, despite uh, the small but significant nerfs. Uh, to Jingo Mastery, he has got a couple of talents that do let him scale reasonably well as a 4 position. Uh, not really sure why they banned him out because you've got the 4 position on the side of Yodas, which is the Spirit Breaker. You know, that said, I can get behind the Undying and the Viper bands on opposite sides. Undying's turned into an absolute beast in my opinion. The Tombstone on Death, the Free Reincarnation, it's really a dream of a hero that scales really well into the late game as a support that has such a high impact in the early game as well. And Viper, I mean, we don't know if Viper is OP Five slash broken remaining. right now. All we know is that Nether Toxin has been difficult to deal with. We've seen Nether Toxin in action here on the U Cypher stage as well in the new patch, yep. and you know, it looks like Marksmen just don't want to deal with it at all. I like the Brewmaster pick as well, just uh, touching upon that because they started with a Lich pick up on the side of Yodas. No real lockdown versus the Brew. Dyer's Pretty much a guaranteed primal gate. split unless the Spirit Breaker gets blessed by RNG Jesus himself. Yep. And you know, now there's no longer. Uh, I mean, RNG just doesn't play as much of a factor because a level 25 Spirit Breaker has the option of picking up that increased greater bash chance as well. So that's another hero that really scales into the late game. And that, that really seems like the theme of the patch with these talent changes, right? Most of the supports that Five seem to fall off remaining. towards the end of the mid game stage now have some sort of tool to take themselves and make them relevant to the late game stage as well. Yeah, I mean, if you if you take a look at the patch as a whole, there are many incentives to push Radiant's early, to but there are also ways for you, no matter what role you're playing, to stay relevant in the late game. Uh, that, that seems to be the bottom line of this patch as a whole. It, it's something that's early game favoured heavily, but Dyer's you're still going to offer something in the late game, no matter what role you're playing. Uh, Rubik pick up, we might see the offensive null field. It'd be nice to have that with an Earthshaker nearby. Yeah, but it's not the most devastating. I mean, Earthshaker is the source of magic damage, but he's a he's sort of the showstopper. He's not the guy that you're hoping to dish out insane amounts of magic damage. He's the guy that you're hoping controls the team fight and holds heroes in position for something a lot more impactful to come in. That impactful hero would have been something like a Lena, perhaps even a Storm Spirit zipping in from range. I don't see any of that available right now. You've got a Brewmaster who's another control hero of sorts. He's not the best at picking off uh, multiple targets in the middle of a team fight. He's great at disrupting the team fight and sending it into this uh, state of controlled chaos. Um, I, I don't see the synergy with Marksman's lineup. They have a fair bit of tankiness, they have some control. They don't have the burst damage just yet. But that could change with the next two picks. They're still looking for what we're assuming is a mid and a core. And their mid yep. options could still be a Storm or a Lina. Yeah. They could do Storm, Lina. Shadow Fiend's not half bad either, actually. Mm -hmm. I guess, I mean, Marksmen are in a bit of a pickle. Which hero are they comfortable revealing at this point? They're one or two position. Radiance uh, Yeah, pick. it's going to be the Medusa coming out from them. Huh. Interesting pickup. Uh, so Medusa now has split shot has as a passive at level 25. Another ridiculous talent which comes into play courtesy 7.07 and Ice Frog is that split shot accepts Ten and seconds. ensures that all unique attack modifiers apply to every split Five shot itself. Remaining. And uh, Stone Gaze is always good in general. I mean, you got a bunch of really tricky heroes to deal with in fights. You got the Brewmaster, you got the Medusa. Yodas did draft to some extent to be able to deal with the Brewmaster in the form of the Doom. But this Medusa is a whole new problem. Yep, but uh, Marksmen now have themselves that uh, bit of late game high ground defensive potential coming up. Medusa, well, she's really good into the late, later stages of the game. She's not a bad uh, high ground sieger herself towards the mid game stage. She started that frontline tank, but again, Marksmen, they're just they're just adding pockets of meat to the lineup. There's a lot of heroes that tank up a lot of damage, yeah. not too many heroes that dish out the damage on their side. Mm -hmm. It's not looking like a very balanced lineup, but it's one that might be super hard to take down. Yodas do have the Doom. Doom's not going to be half bad versus the Medusa in the early stages, but I'm assuming Medusa is going to be rushing the Lincoln Sphere this game. Um, either, either the Spirit Breaker's Charge or the Nether Strike or the Doom's, well, Doom is going to be triggering that Lincoln Sphere, and all of them are very high impact spells to be blocking out early on in the game. Yodas have themselves a fourth pick. They should be looking for a potential Diffusal Blade carrier or maybe an Anti Mage for the Mana Break. I don't see any AM ban. For the Medusa? Yeah, but 
again, I'm not too convinced even as I say that. I don't think Medusa or Medusa's anti mage should actually be dealt with. They'll go with the Mirana. Mirana is a potential diffuser blade carrier. Yeah. I assume it's going to be a core Mirana, given that this is Split Breaker and Lich already picked up. She also has Mana Break as the talent of her mom. Oh like yeah, it, uh, minus 20, 25 Mana Break. Uh, right. This Lich pick up. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if Lich is being nerfed directly, but one of the crucial changes to the laning phase itself is that the range creep EXP has now been reduced from 90 to 69, while the melee creep EXP has sort of been increased from 40 to 57. Yeah. So I think the overall lane EXP stays the same or increases in general, seconds. but uh, yeah, the total wave actually increases by about 30 EXP, yeah. but uh, it's sort of remaining. been evened out between the melee and the range creep. So denying the range creep, while it is impactful, it's not as impactful as it was once upon a time. And that indirectly is a nerf to the Lich in the early stages. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Ice Armor Slow has also been rescaled a bit. It's uh, been heavily nerfed to some extent at early levels. Only in level 4 is it as impactful, if not a little bit more than what it was earlier on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, Lich is no more an auto win for the mid lane. <laughs> uh, last ban for the others, they're gonna ban out the Void. While Marksman, they're gonna ban out the most. Uh, I mean, one of the most high impact one positions in the entirety of the USF League, the Spectre. Yeah, this is something that's been a USF favorite, I have to say. The Spectre's been something that teams pull out as a rabbit out of the hat at the last remaining. pick on more than one occasion now. Yodas, last pick for them, just 20 seconds on the reserve clock to take a decision here. They've been pressed into a corner, they're looking for either a mid or a safe lane, depending on where that Mirana is heading. I'm assuming this is going to be an offlane doom. Yeah. I don't see him going anywhere else. And honestly, I don't see him dying Dyer's in the offlane either. Turn to pick. Oh, Weaver. Weaver, okay. I mean, Marksmen do have a lot of control coming out with that uh, uh, Shaker Rubik. So I'm not sure that Weaver is the ideal choice. And they've still got a final pick on the board, which should be a middle laner. If it's a middle laner with a stun, that's it for the Weaver, I assume. Ten so you go yeah. Buck seems like a good way to round at the draw. It's a draw ranger, okay. Choose your hero. Huh. <clears throat> I mean, the silence isn't I... bad versus the Weaver, but don't you think the draw is super susceptible to being jumped upon by the Spirit Breaker? Yeah, and this interesting charge, three charges of leap as well. <laughs> this leap in Star Storm. And uh, if Mage doesn't have his supports uh, on the ready, he might just end up going down in the mid lane or safe lane or wherever he is. Yeah. But Marksmen have proven time and again that they have emerged as a superior team, right? While their draft may have looked a little uh, shaky on more than one occasion, they proved that their execution has been superior to most teams, if not all teams, on yeah. the U-Cypher circuit this season. But let's see if that holds true in the new patch as well, because Yoda's, I feel like they've got a super mobile, super ganking, tanky lineup coming out, but I see a few problems in their draft as well. They don't have enough burst damage to bring down these tanky heroes on the side of Marksman. You're relying entirely on a Doom to be committed on the Brewmaster. And if the Brewmaster soaks up the Doom, the Medusa is free to do what she wants in the front lines, while the Draw Ranger is free to beat up from behind. Yeah. And the, I think it's fairly straightforward. The longer this game goes, the stronger the Marksman get. And there's going to come a point in the mid-game that's going to be entirely decided upon whether or not Yodas played aggressively enough in the first few minutes. If Yodas do manage to find themselves some good kills with that 11 rota with 11's rotation on that Spirit Breaker, they'll find themselves into a comfortable mid-game stage, but that's when they have to end the game. Because you take it late and versus a Medusa on the high ground, you're not going to breach up there easily yeah, at all. Yeah, but I mean, I agree with you, but it's not going to be extremely easy Prepare for the Yodas to, to end way. this game early. I mean, you've got, you, you've got a Beaver, you've got a Milana, not the best at taking down buildings or objectives. But, um, yeah. Marksman, they have a lot of control and they have a lot of security in the late game as well. In terms of draft, I'm just leaning towards the Marksman here. Uh, you've got to hope to kill that uh, Draw Ranger as much as possible. Another interesting thing on the side of the Yodas is that Eleven is playing the 4 position. This is a first. I, he usually plays the 5, this time around he's playing the Spirit Breaker for the Yodas. Yeah. Looks like uh, since he is the one drafting and giving the calls, he'd like to be around the map himself, which is probably why they're changing things up. It's We've seen this evolution happening with other teams as well, where the fours are starting to take a more active and a more uh, dominant role in the early and mid-game stages, because honestly, that's the hero that has the most mind space available to think, plan, make rotations, right? Acme on the five should be looking about... His objective should be to protect his scores, 
and his, his second objective should be to light up the map with his observer walls. On the other side, it's Eleven who's going to have to make sure that his cores are getting enough space courtesy of the protection given by Acme. That's how they should be playing this duo. But at the moment, it looks like they want to be contesting that top bounty rune and I'm not sure if they're going to transition this into an offensive trial lane altogether because they have left Shondi on the Weaver at the bottom lane by himself. He's up against Red on the Brewmaster. Zark's actually walked out to pick up that bounty rune so he's not bothering with the creep block. I, I guess that's Pashu. what Pashu is for, yeah. <clears throat> well, for now, uh, both sides have uh, got words that do help uh, secure the offlane to some extent. Uh, also, Eleven is holding on to a sentry, so he might get the D ward off himself uh, for his safe lane. Have we got any sentries just yet on the Rubik or the Earthshaker? Uh, well, the Rubik is holding on to some sentry wards. Okay. He has one sentry ward for himself right now. So I'm going to use that on the middle lane to try and get uh, advantage going for his Medusa. It is a Medusa versus Mirana matchup by the looks of it. Neither side going for the block actually. This is a little uh, strange to say the least. I mean, I mean I'd, I'd have assumed it would be the Medusa that goes to the block early on. I don't know if they're thinking about just picking up the bounty rune and TPing back to a, to your tier 2. Because that is one way to get yeah. some semblance of a block going because, well, your TP goes down by then. Or you just hope your support to uh, get the block going for you. I think Zark has uh, the Rubik to help him out. Mage. Got himself a Sage's Master start with, so he's, this is a no nonsense build coming out. He's just going straight for the Ring of Basilis in the lane, yeah. and eventually he's going to pick up the Ring of Aquila with that, I believe. But I'd assume it's going to be one for Zark as well. A little counterproductive, but they're on the other, Actually, the other side of the map. So, so the interesting thing is, mana regeneration does stack. So you can now stack uh, a Vladimir's offering along with a Basilis. You could always do that. Yeah, so maybe they want to. I, I don't know. So yeah, they're hoping to just now get more money. we get the good stuff. Oh, What's he going for? He's, I mean, he started off with. Got the uh, one. He did drop the observer ward on the cliff here, yeah, but he didn't drop a sentry. So Acme doesn't have a sentry of his own. There is a sentry available for eleven. Pashu seeing this, he's, he's actually dropped the sentry ward first. I think eleven saw that. I mean, no, pass should, uh, 11 actually dropped the sentry ward up there, so this means that uh, the Dire Observer isn't going to be dewarded, which will give a minor advantage over to Zark in this laning stage. Hmm. Meanwhile, bottom dead. Really, all he has to do here is pick up a magic stick for himself. Kind of the same uh, logic for Shondi as well, but Shondi's going to be missing a lot of his auto attacks with the trunk of haze being thrown yeah. upon him. By the up top, it is going to be a try versus duo matchup, or rather a try. Yeah, it's going to be a try versus duo matchup. Eleven is still in the middle lane. He did charge out on the Medusa. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to be a fun lane for the Mirana. Zark's going to have uh, the precision aura bonus kicking in as well. Yeah. I mean, I sense the wave is constantly going to be pushed in uh, courtesy the Mystic Snake, uh, provided he gets a couple of levels in it, and uh, it's going to be hard for Milana to even uh, control the bounty, the power up runes, if at all. Uh, Medusa is going to do rather well, like you mentioned, with that precision aura. For now, Milana doing reasonably well under own tower. Pashu yeah, out of position, Kale, he does have his cost to earth. The Fisher is there, but Pashu. Been blocked himself. He's thinking of turning back in. Kale says thank you very much. Let's walk into what? the user. Another cross plus telekinesis. Picks up the throws it back. But at the range will get the kill. And partial out of position and punished rightly so. That was such an awkward misstep coming out from Pashu. I don't know why he chose to walk this way. Instead of just hiding in the trees and waiting yeah. for the fish to wear off. That's an easy first blood going over to the Lich, I believe, and the Doom doesn't even get punished for it at all. In fact, no one gets punished for it on this top lane. I mean, just an invitation to pick up a kill, right? He walks out the first time, doesn't end up dying, walks again just to make sure that the opponent ends up getting the kill. Mm -hmm. And uh, good stuff coming out uh, from the Yodas early on. 
Red is doing pretty well for himself. He's actually sitting atop the network charts. Nope, it's actually the Medusa that's on top. Okay. Sark's on top, so. Red's sitting with a decent 7 and 1 CS versus 5 and 3 and Shanti's got the full magic wand though. That's gonna help his cause here. Red chose not to pick up a magic wand, so. Looks like he's not really bothered about these Shukri G stacks coming out on him time and again. But elsewhere, Mage gets a kill on the Acme and Lich. Here comes the Levin charging in. Kale's doing some work and Mage might end up paying for that with his sins. Or paying for his sins with that. Mage gets uh, the turnaround coming out. Kale gets slowed down with the charge to Tachi towards Fisher. Setting up a kill here. Partial gets the kill. Eleven's in a bit of trouble. Acme comes in to offer some support, but Eleven is fairly tanky here. And taking him down is not an option, but taking Acme down a second time is the touching god. Gonna get stunned. The three man stun comes out there from Eleven, who's now gone in on Mage, who's gotten bashed up and dropped down. Eleven gets that kill. Kale doesn't manage to lock down Partial. No points in that infernal blade for the mini stun. And that means he's gonna fizzle out as a two for one trade on the stop lane. I mean, they took the kill of the bro, so it's, it's a small but significant victory and the waves pushed in. So Doom is going to be getting a lot of CS and EXP as well. Uh, Mage is going to be a little displeased with himself and this is one of the big downsides of running a drone. They, they've nerfed her movement speed so heavily that she can easily be run down by heroes like the Spray Break and Eleven is just going at it again. Scott 30, you even got the neutral creep with the purge. They can purge up mates if they want to and they're going to do just that. Itachi God with the Fisher, the bash is there from Eleven. The Enchant totem is going to buy mates a little bit of time. The Scott starts worn off. So Kaelin and Eleven can't chase anymore, but they're giving Mage a hard time in the safe lane. Yeah, that was a good save from Itachi God, but unfortunately Mage is still gonna have to make the trip back to the base. He's gonna get a consolation prize at least with this bounty ring, really, but that's not safe, but... Meanwhile, Mid, Medusa and Mirana duking it out, but Mirana's gonna have to leap away there. He does have a salve, so he's gonna be okay for now. Zark's got no salve available though. The shrines aren't online for another 30 seconds. He's got to watch his step here because Mirana could well just leap in and start right-clicking him. In fact, in just a bit, she's going to have uh, enough for a leap and a star storm. Zark's got to be really careful here. But here has Pashu coming in. Haste. Look at this. Arrow flies, connects on to Pashu. That's probably not the target you want to be going for. Instead, Zark's been healed up here by his ally. He's going to be okay for the time being. There is a charge coming in from 11. You can see Mirana just poking and prodding, doing whatever little damage she can before the fight actually breaks out. Eleven decides not to. Mirana tanked up too much from those creeps. Yeah, it didn't have mana for the Star Storm either. And even then, it was a dicey kill at best. And uh, good decision coming up from Eleven on the Spirit Breaker as well as in Mirana. Red's doing okay on this bottom lane for now. I mean, he's at 18 CS, but the Weaver's doing even better. Sitting at a good 20 himself. Up top though, 11, he sees Mage and he charges him instantly. Itachi God gets that Fisher, but he doesn't block him out. And that means they can dive under the tower. Acme did get the slow up. Mage get hit, gets hit with the Infernal Blade and 11 gets the kill to the last auto attack. The Scorcher, Dujan, keeping Kale alive through this. There's three heroes that have rotated up top to get the return kill. So four heroes in total sitting on the top side from the Dyer. One of them ends up going down. AKA the Draw Ranger. They do get a return kill, but now 11 wants more. Because Pashu is low. There's the Thrust low coming out there, Pashu taking a bit of a beating, but the missed chance coming out from the Drunk and Hayes doesn't do enough as Acme gets the kill and TP's out to safety along with his buddy, the Spirit Breaker. Yeah, I think they'll be pleased with the Thrust. And they've noticed a huge weakness in the Marksman drop, which is that if you just run in the drone, there's not much you can do. Has she? Oh, mid lane, perfect arrow coming out from uh, Latif Saddam Hussein, that's his name. <laughs> that he gets absence. the kill though. Well done there. That was absolutely crucial coming out from him. Scoring that kill on the Medusa is exactly what they need. Not only have they killed out the Draw Ranger, aka one of their cores on the top side, they've now gotten a solo kill in the middle lane with this Mirana. This is the kind of early game start that the Yodas need to actually take them through into a comfortable mid game. But, like we talked about earlier, ending this game is going to be a Herculean task for them. Up against that Brewmaster, Earthshaker, and uh, Medusa trio. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Then got the room. Smacked in the back. His skirt lifted up as Eleven gets the kill once more. Looks like this move to the position four is working out for him. Yeah, he's definitely been active, active early on. He's got a bunch of key kills. Um, and he knows already that Mage has been forced to move back into his jungle. They've got Vision 
and this vision is uh, what's providing them a lot of control early on. He's charged Zark as well. This could be a harder kill, but the charge could be set up for an arrow. Look for the arrow. It's there from the Mirana. They're running in the Star Storm. It hurts a bit, but he's got the mana. She low on mana. Mystic Snake will give him a little bit to work with, though. And Zark does run off for the time being. That was an arcane rune on the Mirana for that arrow and the Star Storm, but uh, the fact that the mana gets stolen away a little later on is a bit worrisome for her. Look at that kid, he's just cheekily sticking around to try and leech EXP. Mage just farming in the jungle because that's where he's been relegated. This is 8 minutes in. The carry on the side of Mark Smith is sitting at level 3. This is not working out for them at all. I mean, they, they could just pressure him a little bit more if they want to. The problem is there is a shrine in the vicinity and uh, it is dangerous territory to really try and contest the row in our own jungle this early on. But it seems as if they're going to do just that. Acme is walking ahead. You've got a charge coming in from 11. 11. Showing uh, just the right amount of discipline backs off for the time being. And they're going to try and possibly pressure an objective. Sean D needs to be careful. Fade ball. No telekinesis. I just like to see the Yudas take down the tier 1 early on. Uh, try and force uh, Mushtakos on the side of the marksman to put an end to their laning phase. Uh, oh, sure. What Shani's are you doing, man? You time. can't afford to fight man fight versus Shondi like this. There's the lift along with the clap. He just sticks it all up and goes forward again. The charge vision allowing him the liberty to do these shenanigans. But look at this. The cavalry is coming in. Red's going to TP in. Pashu's going to TP out. And Shondi will try and make a clean escape. Radiant's the middle tower is under attack. got the time lapse as well. All the while though, Zark's using this time and space to do some damage in the tier 1 on the middle lane while Eleven is here. They have an opportunity to charge. They did get the swarm off and it's actually got has been tagged with it. But with Reds in the vicinity there, you don't want to go in. Top tower is about to take the plunge. I, I sense that the Mirana wants to get really active early on and participate in these fights. But honestly, the best thing she can do is just hold on to the mid lane. Uh, try and just keep up with the Medusa in terms of farm and possibly after taking down the tier 1 in the top lane I'd like to see Yodas get a little bit more aggressive Kale is having uncontested free farm I think if you take a look at net worth he's way ahead of the draw Yeah I mean Chandi is the one on top though This bottom lane has worked out beautifully for him under attack. Yeah Stop. maybe Maybe the Yodas need to pop a smoke, commit the Doom, and oh, it looks yeah. like they're going to do just that. Doom into the Medusa, 11 comes charging in. The Fisher, though, once more from Itachi God on point. The arrow not. Here comes the Panda, splits into three. Uzi gone for the trying to run down the Medusa while Red cyclones the Mirana. Doesn't manage to stun anyone. They want this Mirana, but she's got Leap to work with. The boulder is there, they're trying to control the Mirana while elsewhere, Eleven's gone in once more. Hitachi got controlled by the stolen neutral and Kale gets the kill. Red, his primal split has come to an end and he's isolated and there's not much he can do. Zark managed to survive all of that, Doom was thrown upon him and he walks away without dying. Eleven is just being super active here, the moment he sees the target he starts zoning in on him along with the rest of his teammates, they're just playing some hyper aggressive donor here and it's gonna pay off for them. There's the lift coming out, they don't have another way to stop him here, will they get the kill? No they won't, Kale unfortunately not in position to get that infernal blade mini stun off. But again, this is a lot of pressure being applied, Mage is forced to TP back, he's at level 4, 11 minutes into this game. I, does the Radiant's Earthshaker have a... Okay, the Earthshaker and Rubik are not that good either, but if you take a look at this Midbreaker, he's level 5. Grenade 6, pretty soon. Uh, they're also going to get themselves this tier 1 on the top lane, but it's coming at the cost of their tier 1 lane. Yeah, it's possibly the tier 1 the at uh, bottom. That seems to be the trait that the marksmen are looking Radiant's for. Bottom they're trying to pressure the tier 1 in the bottom lane. I Die really hope that the Mirana doesn't give away this tier 1 for nothing. Uh, the glyph has been committed, the deny is not there. Is so attack. it's a tier 1 top for a tier 1 mid. And some chip damage on the tier Dyer's 1 bottom. Meanwhile, look at 11, he's forward. going charging towards the bottom Radiant's lane. Eleven's gonna get tagged with the Mystic like Stake on his way towards them. Land minutes in 7 4 is the score. It, uh, it's pretty clear that the Yodas are the big winner in this early game. They managed to uh, restrict the Droves farm. Uh, they've killed them multiple times and uh, they're getting some good map control by taking down the tier 1 in the top lane and the deep observer they have in the dire jungle. Zark is the only one who's done well for himself on the side of uh, the marksman. 
Red has hit six, but didn't have the most impactful of primal splits uh, um, A golden at the mid fight that took place earlier on. Well, Zark's got himself that DD rune, which is helping him farm up these uh, ancient dances. He's got himself the full Dragon Lance finished up with an infused raindrops for backup. But elsewhere, Pashu getting run down here. Eleven just gonna walk straight over the Fisher line and smack Pashu in the back. Nether Strike committed, no hesitation. Itachi gone. He isn't level six just yet. A chain frost was committed, but the Doom was thrown down as well. It's a double kill for Kale, who finally ended up going down. And Acme needs to get the hell on out of here as well. Eleven, caught him now. Gonna high five Zark on his way towards there. But uh, all of this comes with the radiant tier one tower in the bottom, with the dire tier one tower going down in the bottom lane as well. So Shandi's been having an absolute field day across the map for the most part. Doom gets himself on top of the net worth charts with the double kill. And now they're looking to take down the last remaining tier one at mid with Zark getting charged upon. They don't have another strike to work with and no line for the arrow either. They're just gonna force out a stone gaze and back the hell away. Oh, I mean, 13 minutes in, you hope that the Earthshaker is somewhere close Dyer's to the 11 so that he has attack. some form of teamfight contribution. Uh, right now, everybody on the side of the Marksman is under leveled. The net worth only leading, uh, I mean, only tilting in favor of the Yodas. Could this be the first loss for the Marksman in the run of the U Cycle League? It's too soon to tell. It, it is, but I mean, one, one thing is for certain though. If the minions on the draw are alive and they just focus the target, like the Doom, like what happened earlier on at the top tier 2, they can quite easily just bring down any of the No contestants here coming out from the marksman. I'm not sure if they're waiting for Red to pick up his blink or what. Why is game making it hard to I, I think he's just hoping to tank up. But. To tank up means to get resistance to Dyer, physical damage, not yeah. magic, magic damage. Head. What are you worried about here? Radiant's I, bottom I, I don't, I don't know. Primal split? I mean, a thunderclap? A fade bolt? The bigger problem here is the draw ranger and the midi. This is some. I mean, without sugar coating it, this is some horrible decision making, man. I I don't see it. I don't. I just don't see the value of having a hood, even even whole pipe in this game. I, I definitely don't see the value of the fight, but I mean, Kale's made his intentions rather clear that... He's got like four armor. They they want to group up and push. I mean, they, they want something to work with. The Crimson Guard would have been a better way to get started if that was the intention. That would have and been the best idea, honestly. Yeah, I, I presume Kale would be looking for it after this one. Right. He did get himself that blink dagger now, so they can try and take a fight on their terms. And Zark's not hitting too uh, well, he's hitting pretty hard as well. He's got the full Dragon Lance online. He's also fairly tanky with that full level mana shield. Yeah, I think he's also taking the plus 20 damage talent. Yeah, yep. 25 of the evasion. Mirana going for that diffusal blade, so she's going for the double feedback. I'm not entirely sure if it stacks, but it should, right? Because diffusal isn't a unique attack modifier, right? I mean, it, it does because, I mean, mana break on the anti mage is no more a unique attack modifier. So I assume this is also no more a unique attack modifier. The mana break that the Milana gets as a talent. They, they practically removed unique attack modifiers. No host guard Dota. Yeah, it, it used to be my wet dream in Dota 1 that someday I'll build a desolator on an enchantress. Yeah, now I can. Middle tower is under attack. Red's doing though. He's just hanging around on the bottom lane, hoping that the Weaver oversteps her boundaries. But Shandi is playing it safe. He's got his own Dragon Lance, so that makes him a slight bit more tanky as well. And I'm assuming it's going to be the Decimator for him next. I wouldn't have been uh, against the Diffusion Blade on Shandi as well. Because your primary issue is going to be taking down the Medusa quickly enough. I think he's got to consider Manta Sense something like maybe to deal with the silence. Yeah, he's gonna need something. The Mishan's to coming silence. in, look at this. There's the glass. The clap is bad. They've got enough for he's gonna time lapse out. Three oh. pandas get high fired. Shondi Sukuchi's move towards Mage. Mage being controlled. A cyclone onto the Lich, ensuring that the chain frost is not there. But look at that. Mage dropping low. He earned the auto attack. Shondi gets the kill. And the chain frost bounces between the pandas as well as Zark. No one's fallen on the side of the Yodas. And in fact, in fact, Zark might be in a bit of trouble. The dust is committed. They're trying to bring down Shondi while Levin gets tossed around by the Rubik. Shondi still alive. But Dyer's Eleven has taken a hit and Red's still giving chase. He's got stick charges, he, he pops blink. them, but still not enough. The scarab upon him and he can't blink indeed. 
All the while, though, Mirana continues to split push middle. Attack. I'm a little surprised she chose not to TP into that fight. It's, uh, yeah. It seems like a rookie mistake to make. And you also had no Doom TPing in there. Both of them had TP scrolls, but they chose not to attend that fight. I mean, even then, they got the draw, they lost uh, the Spirit Breaker. Yeah, that's basically what happened. I, I think Akme survived through it as well. So. Yeah, Akme was just cycloned and he was just spectating the fight from up there. Yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty certain things could have gone a lot better for Yodas if they rotated their heroes over there. Anyway, bottom, Red's going in here, Acme. Can't turn back around, starts auto-attacking. We've also got Shondi coming into the swamp. swarm. No primal split for 60. But Rubik's in the vicinity. Shondi probably doesn't want to chase like this. A good lift coming out from Pashu will cancel the charge from 11, but it's not going to do too much for Pashu's own health here. He steals the Shikuchi. The urn takes him down, however. 11. With a clutch urn from over the, over the divide there. Gets that one kill. Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't end up picking an charge. But, uh, yeah, the urn is paying dividends. It helped uh, bring down Mage earlier on. It helped secure the kill on the Rubik. And, I, I mean, the Marksmen, they're trying their best to stay alive. They're trying their best to dodge these uh, fights and these moves of uh, aggression coming out from the Yodas. But, unfortunately, the damage too much and we were still too mobile. Easy uh, tier 2 tower possibly. Look at that coming out from the side of the marksman. Especially without the primal split to work with. They're pushing rather hard for now at least with just Chandi and Acme. They are going for the diffusion there on Chandi by the way. So Chandi will be a decimator. They're focused on items that have worked well versus that uh, Medusa. Medusa. I, I like it. I think that's the right item choice. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of this hood. This is the only thing I'm going to critique throughout the game, but I'm happy that he, he isn't going for the pipe. Instead, he picks yeah. up the, uh, the much needed plate yeah, mail. That's going to help. The Shivas Guard is definitely going to help. Well, oh, plate look at this. Oh! Arrow. Why didn't he just wait for the charge to connect? If he just waited for the charge to connect, that was a confirmed kill on Mage and possibly another yeah. objective, but the now they're going to go in. Itachi got tagged with the swarm. Nowhere to go. Tries to TP out, but doesn't get very far. Look Zark. at this, they're looking for more. Kale is moving in. Pashu with the telekinesis. Zark charge upon him. The beetle has tagged him as well. The tower takes down the beetle. Kale's still running in. He's got the face boots, but they're not going to dive into that tier 3. Good discipline daughter coming up from the earth. Does. Time and time again, I've seen the split breaker just cancel many a charge. Uh, after assessing the situation and realizing that it was just plain risky and stupid to overcome it. Well, Shandi's almost got his own Diffusal Blade finished up. Uh, same with the Mirana. That's going to be the next big power spike when these double Diffusal Blades come out. Medusa gets that less tanky pressure. and yeah. without the Lincoln Sphere, she's what still a prime candidate for Doom. Okay, Hale. what on earth were you thinking, man? There's the Moonlight Shadow committed, but the Dust was there as well. Now, does he want to commit the Doom at the risk of it being stolen away by Pashu? He turns around, shows his bomb to Zark and ends up dying nonetheless. And the entirety of Yodas just continues to split push besides Mirana. She's doing some heavy damage on the stair too. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's somewhat okay. The others are doing some structural damage and they are getting more out of the map. Right now, the marksmen are merely just reacting to uh, the others. Uh, they need that blink in the earth shaker. Really Even do. then, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. That's the one tool the that could help turn the tides of battle back in their favor. Uh oh, they've spotted an isolated Zark. Can they bring him down in time? Though is Shandy the got question. His it's flying out to him, I believe. Yeah. No, that's actually Mirana's diffusal blade that's flying out, sir. Shondi might just have changed gears. Or no, he's, oh, he's got money for the recipe, yeah. Okay, the double diffusal is now online. I think it's go time. I mean, honestly, if you're on the side of Yodas, you've got the lead, you take the advantage and you push. 11, going way too deep in, not like this though, but the arrow, it connected on Zark behind and he's now completely out of mana, a chain frost committed, he has no mana and he sees this, he's gonna leap forward, misses on the star storm, there's a glimmer cape, actually a shadow amulet, was that a glimmer cape? Something protects him for the time being, Zark does manage to survive for now, he does get the hell away from him. And Echo Slam committed to bring down Sean Lee. Shut up, Hussein. Throws down that arrow. Gets the lead forward. Double star star committed. Itachi got. Ends up dropping one. Bashi drops as well. Kale with the double. Three down on the side of the dial. And it looks like the Yodas will get themselves the tower after a very haphazard team fight. Yeah, I mean, the Yodas kind of misplayed that fight they did anyway. The Sean Lee's achievement, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there was a little missing in terms of detection, but that just goes to show how far ahead they are. 
They absolutely stormed over the marksmen and now they're going to move into the last one. We was respawning in a bit. They were trying to go to if they need to. And, and uh, you got to remember all of that was without the defuser blade on the lever as yeah. well. So yeah, and, and the Doom came in really late to that fight as well. He managed to get the Doom off on red though, so there was no primal split there either. Okay. I'm not sure. I think it's a war or not. Anyway, they're going to get ages. And this is going to give them that extra layer of security when they start grouping up and looking for their next objective. There's nothing that the marksman can do to stop this Roshan from going down there. Do you think this is a good game for Aerobic? Why would you say that? I mean, I, I mean, as a hero, do you think so? I mean, yeah, he's got a fair few skills to steal here. I mean, Doom's obviously the prime idea, the prime candidate for his uh, spell steal, but... Barring that, yeah, Mirana's got a good set of skills. You've got uh, okay. mobility with the Weaver. It's good for the spell steal, not so good if you're thinking of Radiant's it as a standalone for uh, the well, as a standalone support here for the aura and such. But honestly, I think most of Rubik's energies now come from that offensive null field, right? 22% mm -hmm. magic damage amp is pretty insane. Decent. That ward though, providing valuable information on uh, the Mirana's whereabout. Unfortunately, the sentry just out of range of it. Dachi God's just gonna stick in his base while the entirety of the Marksman squad are going to be pushing through the bottom lane for the time being. More D wards needed here from Acme. And he's going to keep it towards the bottom lane where there was a charge coming out. They go in with Chandi on the front lines. Remember, he has the Aegis, so that's a license to play Balzi. Pashu tagged with the defusal plane. Slow. Mirana's going to get the kill. The auto attacks will swap. They finish the job as he tries to make a run for Red. He's going to try and get him in the arrow. Just barely skimming past him as he blinks into the line of fire. The charge connects on him. And it looks like Mirana's gonna get himself a double. Those two diffusion blades doing so much work. Somewhere in the sometime in the middle of that fight, Red lost all his mana and couldn't even split. He didn't have mana for the primal split, and this is really starting to hurt the marksman. They're a draw lineup that hasn't started pushing. They've taken one tier one, two tier ones. And um, Mage, I mean, sure he's got that Shadow Blade, but that's something that can be dealt with very easily by just holding on to some detection. I think Kale's gonna need a Blink Tiger next. Yeah. I don't think the Shiver's God completion is as high on the priority list. You probably go for the Blink and, you know, find a way to jump in on that Blue Master and keep him away yeah. from the fight. They did get the Lincoln Sphere on Zark, so that does help uh, keep him slightly survivable. At least one of his Diffusion Blade charges will be uh, missed on him. But he's not hitting very hard at the moment, so if they kill off the rest of his teammates, he's nothing but a sitting duck. There you go. They're gonna jump in. Pashu with the lift. In a timely manner, Pashu does get tagged with that cross though. I know. Flies, doesn't connect. Pashu barely sidesteps it. And this is all nothing but a setup for this top lane, while Acme is gonna get the D wards off as well. But Aegis, Aizama. Almost everything they need to start uh, slowly sieging high ground. Even uh, a regen rune available on this Mirana. Yeah, Shandi's, somebody's even dropped a clarity on him. So, the others, they're doing rather well. I really don't know what the game plan is for the marksmen. They, they're sort of hoping that maybe the Urchaker with his Blink Dagger somehow wins them their next big game fight. Well, they're going out. They've spotted out the fact that Marksmen are making a mistake by split pushing. They think it's going to scare them off, but instead it's Marksmen that are going to have to keep you back to defend. With the Doom at the ready, with the charge ready to go, and a region Doom sitting on the Mirana, who's being awfully greedy about it, by the way. I think it's time she popped it. You want to have mana before the fight breaks out, else that region Doom is just going to get cancelled somewhere along the way. Probably just going to pop it now. I think it's 30 mana, 40 mana to be the next time. Why are they... What? Okay, so they're teleporting back. Okay, so they just let Lich, Lich go back. The rest of them are still here. Oh, uh, Red goes in, smoke, claps the ground. For those of you who like Haiku a lot, that's the sound of one hand clapping. Red completely whiffing on the initiation there with this blink dagger. No ward available though, so that was basically a yeah. blind blinking coming out. I mean, he was somewhat hoping that uh, they were working with a man advantage because the lich ended up going to the bottom lane, but uh, didn't end up catching anyone. I'm not a fan of them trying to breach high ground with just two heroes here. What, what's the game plan with 11 and Kale just sitting I, here? I think they're slowly 
could have pushed with bigger numbers, but this is costly. Acne out of position. Doesn't have a TP, does have a mech. The frost armor is nice, but look at this. Mage, he's the one who's going to be out of position soon enough because 11 did charge him, but ended up cancelling his own charge. Why he chose to go for that bounty rune is beyond me. He should have just considered getting back to his high ground. He might have even survived in that case. Anyway, a freebie for Mage, a much needed freebie for Mage actually. As he's now making progress towards his next big item, which by the looks of it should be a Mantis. I mean, he picked up a stray ultimate orb here. Is he, is he gonna is finish he going this Lincoln's Silver himself? Edge maybe? I mean, the Lincolns wouldn't be bad, I mean. Are we looking at any Lotus Orbs and such coming out on the other side at the moment? I think no. they're a little too poor. Red, um, I think since that uh, mage on the hunt, they need to be careful. Mirana does have an arcane rune, but a well timed silence could be more than enough. The gosh is the enchant totem as well. Fish on the ground, you got to charge up on Hitachi God, who committed the Echo Slam to get that kill on the Mirana. But here comes the reinforcements. Sean D nearby on the Weaver. A Nether Strike on the draw would be nice, but they're controlling the Outshaker. They'll go for him, and eventually they'll take him down. He's fighting a creep here by himself. This is a recipe for disaster. I don't know what he was thinking. Are they going to be able to catch him though? Apparently not. He does manage to break away from this. I mean, he's out here by himself. He's got to be super careful because Red wouldn't hesitate to commit the kind of speed to control him there. But, all said and done, there's no echo slam to work with for this next fight. They're pushing as a three man unit through this bottom lane. Shandi takes a hell of a beating here. I mean your debt. This is this is where it gets super difficult for Yodas. Yeah. Reaching high ground is no easy task. And Mystic Snake, the range on the draw, and uh, the Medusa who both have Dragon Lances if I'm not mistaken. We probably just wait for the next Aegis again and then try and do it. Unless we go for the Blink Dagger on the KOD, it yeah. needs to finish his Chicken Scott. We got a BKB finish up on the Weaver as well, by the way, and one on the Mirana too, so. Massive power spikes coming out. The control from the Earthshaker and the drawing are not going to mean too much. Mm -hmm. And they can find a pick off here. That oh, oh, the he's got the Rubik. They're going in. Kale with the Shivata. Earn upon the Rubik. Timely cast. Red goes in. Two man clap. The split arrows are there from Medusa along with the Mystic Snake. The Primal Split comes out. Red trying to control one of them. Both pandas falling fast. The Fire Pandas already fallen. And the pandas are on it. Indeed. 11 with the charge. With the Nether Strike. With the control. Dark dropping low, the diffuser blade doing his work. Kill on a killing spray, gets it with the sword sword, and he's moving on to four. Then his primal split is worn off. No one falls on the side of the earth, does. The tier three under siege, a buyback coming out from the Medusa. Zark, he's still got his buddy Maze with him, so the precision order is going to be good enough. There goes in, three back clap, he's got the ghost upon him after that. But Latif Saddam Hussein, he just jumps in with his BKB. He's focusing Maze and Kane is upon him as well. A quick little Throw some time. A moonlight shadow to retreat, but they've got detection. This is probably the death of the dude. And 11, he said, hell yeah, I'm out of here. He's charged, he's gotten back. It was a buyback though on the Medusa. Dead, still on the hunt. We're gonna catch anyone. So a buyback and four deaths results in a kill on the Doom while the tier 3 still stands. It's a defense, but a scrappy Costly. one at best. Um, Mage, he did pick up the Lincoln Sway for himself, by the way. That Doom, really not a factor. The prize he didn't even is mine. need the Doom in the entire team fight. He just held on to it right up until the bitter end. Yeah. I mean, commit it on something, man. Even if you throw it down on a Rubik to get him out of the equation, I think I'm, that's fine. I'm not a fan of the BK. Oh. Oh for on the Doom? Kim? I don't know. I, I'm, I kind of like it, actually. I think he could maybe consider Halbert at this point. Albert, maybe. I, I mean, the, the best it does is trigger the Lincoln's face. Maybe I think a blink dagger would actually be the ideal yeah. choice, to be honest. If we can blink in and doom off uh, Red over there, or even for that matter, doom up that Ruby. Right? Just take him out of the equation and be the tanky drunk liner to start the fight. That works. I mean, if not blink, then uh, Albert over BKB. But yeah, look at this. Far too. I mean, that's why it's trying to be one time. The Fisher is only blocked up the Rubik and they're going to bounce in left and right for the Nether Strike and secure the kill. 
not just that way. Also, there's a bee ward that we just planted the ward. And the ward that we just planted the other. Um, Mage did pick up the survivor from the IG. What the hell was that? The thing is, I, I mean, if Shandi has a charge coming in, he could Go kill the mage. But all he needs to do is carry some detection. Mage is getting too much just because he's holding onto a shadow blade. Yep. This, this should have been a kill. It really should have. You, it's probably time to get rid of the magic wand and just pick up the dust for yourself at yep. the moment. Well, they have that dire observer world watching this Mirana again, so they're not going to be able to connect that arrow onto Mage on the sidelines here. And if there is a charge coming in from 11, maybe he spotted as well. Ma 11 is going for the Halberd, though, so that's going to work in his favor. Not just for the disarm, but the, the evasion that kicks in from the Halberd as well is going to be extremely useful. The disarm, the evasion, uh, means a pop in the Lincoln Spear, but look at this, they're going for round two on the Mirana, they go into the Enchant Totem. It did connect despite him using the lead. BKB coming Charges up to Mirana, coming and she can turn. It's only one arrow, it's not going to connect onto anyone. But Mirana leaps forward once more, and eventually brings down the Earthshaker. Nice. He does have a buyback. He does he have the buyback, have as it. well as the Echo Slam. Oh, but look at this. They're not going to buy back to the first place, no, that's for certain. I'm, I'm not even sure that Marksmen have any clue what's going on. Yeah, they don't. I mean, the one observer that was supposed to be near the pit has been the one. The only one that they have right now on this side of the map is this. Well, stupidly obvious observer what <laughs> but it's not going to do much when uh, they're already in the pit doing damage. This is going to be an easy Aegis. It's going to come uh, at a very opportune time as well because I feel like this is when Yotas are looking for maximum power spent. It's only down here to where left to the end of the over is Shondi, the Aegis over is Aegis. Now with the Dragonlance range on both those heroes, all they've got to do is stand down and beat up on those towers. The middle tier one is already at a half HP, so might as well go into there. 11, with the license to roll in, knowing that his teammates will back him up if he chooses to charge him. He even drops an Observer, it was for it out, there's no immediate sense of the war. Arrow, oh, it's gone in deep and it did connect, but Hitachi did get that yeah, fish I, out. I think they can... Comes yeah, he's trying his best, Shandi, I mean, he's looking up the damage from the Medusa. They've got the mech on the next day, but I think the tier 3 will end up falling slowly, but surely scale though. Look at Red though, he's just throwing drunken A's after drunken A's and Mirana's doing no damage on the building whatsoever. Yeah. Reaver baits it out for this time. And that's the tier 3 taken apart. Look at bottom of the mage. Has and a split push. Acme goes in to respond to this. They're coming in from behind as well. But they have protection. Mage spotted out, but nothing to cancel his TP. And even if they did, they didn't have protection on kill either. Oh, they did have a dust on him. This should now be shrines into another high ground. I mean, it's go so time. You cannot I, afford to stop I mean, right now. Yeah, I'm not even sure if they need to bother with it. Maybe push mid in the bottom. Try it. Are we looking at any key uh, items uh, for the dive? Has Medusa picked up anything since we could pick? Okay. So she's got the Skadi. Hmm. That is a lot of stats. Maze has got the Maelstrom as well. What do you think Maze is for the dead? A Hurricane Pike? Yeah, I think a Hurricane Pike sounds like a mutable thing. I mean, golden you gotta have some. You might as well finish up what you started off with the dragon line. Get the hurricane back, get the silver rifle. Hope that you're doing enough damage from the back lines while the Medusa soaks up on the front. Butterflies will prove to be really good. They're trying to bring down Radiant's top tower. Radiant fortified their structures. After hammering him in the Radiant phase, they're just struggling to stop him from pushing all back. Radiant doused their own top tower. It really should be this for the Yodas. Yeah, it really shouldn't. I agree with you. I mean, you've got to buy a gem at this point. Really, right? Yes. Go deward the entire map, have the gem at the end, in case you need to bring down that uh, Shadow Wave da uh, Darwin there as well. But they can't afford to waste this ADC speed. I, I really think they need to go and end this game right now. We talked about how the marksman only gets stronger with the passing of time. Ready. They're not going to be able to do much unless they finish them off now. I know. Fishing. If that arrow connects, they'd have gone into the game. Uh, the game's a on that team, or rather on that range barracks as well. 
he does get blocked out, but he's way too tanky with that shiver start and doesn't really give a damn. The range balance will fall, the melee balance will come this lady as well. Mage can only split push at his best at the best of his abilities right now, but the fight about it will see. Radiance. about going in there. The arrow just connect on Zon, but is it enough to go in? They took out the link here. The doom committed as well. They're deleting the Medusa from this fight, and now they're committing all in on her. The chain cross is there. It's right in the middle of the piece. They fan does as well, and it's bouncing about beautifully. Fast. Same on the back line. It doesn't matter. Gale is just going to be the piece of piece that goes into the front lines when the barracks get taken apart. And now Mage is under the fray as well. Got the next to see that he does the shot to the all the got for it was a single game of barracks and they did end up costing a game of them. No buybacks for a start and deal committed as well. But a thousand gold changes hands just because of that one kill. <coughs> I mean, they they got what they came for, but... Uh, oh, looks like deal. I was mistaken. No shrines taken down either. So they just okay. went straight for the base the last time around. And this is going to get even more that. troublesome because Mage is inching closer and closer to that butterfly. And remember, with every point of damage that Mage gets, the harder Medusa starts hitting as well by virtue of the precision aura. I think uh, Haste. Doom has to pick up that link damage. Yeah, you it up. You can see him getting kited every now and then in these fights. Okay, this sure. got 11. That. No detection, no means to close the gap. And uh, I mean, it seems as if the marksmen are doing mine. Let's push, let's smoke, they're not really sure. They did pop a smoke, they did walk into 11, but they didn't go heavy for the kill. I presume it was just because Mirana committed the moonlight and left without the sexy leader, spell breaker to save. Well, we do have a butterfly complete on the Mirana as well if she wants to hide out. That is the previous thing she's sitting back in the moment. Wait, she needs to spell Okay, yeah. Not to the support to become some utility item. I think you've got to pick up a gem. Pop a gem, find the drogue, kill the drogue. Especially if you've noticed that the drogue has picked up another item. It probably indicates that she's missing by that one, and that's when you really want to get the drogue. Well, Pasha's oh, going to get the drogue. I thought she got waiting. The pick is starting to go through the team channel. The pick control the Mirana. Then Bao is going to chase the talent to the evasion. He did end up going down. Well, because of that, he doesn't have a bad idea. I, I don't know what he's doing. He's just out there by himself. He's just protecting the ball. Farming alone while his teammates are on the other side of the map. That's how you throw a game. Oh, yes. I like the small adjustment coming up from the hero. I think Sean Lee has noticed that uh, Dro is building into a butterfly and Sean Lee started queuing up uh, the Bloodthorn himself. It's definitely gonna help Dyer's it's bottom right. shrine is but under the attack. The question is, is it gonna come out in time? The question is, is trying to take down the yeah, target when you're banana and using the right thing to do. Invisibility! He's fighting a fight 4v5 and yeah, Red yeah, picks up an issue in room. Gale, he sucks the blink. Mage is coming along with Shadow and Shadow Blade as well. It seems that Shawnee and the rest of the team are retreating. Shawnee actually goes in. They want Parsons. Parsons did manage to stay in the team. And who gets Rubik jumping like a frog again and again. But he's got no luck, and they could get red for seconds here. Shondi going in, he's got the diffuser plane to control the panda. Is red going to come with the split, or is he going to hold on and possibly buy back? Oh, he lifts his arm, and in the me. worst Ranger. possible time. You've you got to be kidding me. He's not playing, Shondi is... How did Shondi end up on the middle lane? Now what do we do? We wait? No, we can continue. Shondi? 
What? Back is back. He was back? bottom. He ended up back in the okay, middle okay. lane for yeah, some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, before I, he goes I have yet. no okay, idea. Okay. <laughs> that, I mean, that could have gone either way. The, well, what, what's worth <laughs> noting is that red <laughs> did also miss yeah. that split. <laughs> and Sean B. Celeste. I mean, if they want to, they could just mark down mid once more. The players are good to go. I mean, yeah, you just need to do the chase on Sean B. Buy your item and sort it out to you and go end the game. No, no. He's got a 40 second window where the Jao has no buyback. They've got the bottom barracks open and ready for the taking. And Dyer's bottom shrine! He's under bottom attack. shrine! Has, has fallen! That buys the Jao into about 10 seconds. Unfortunately uh, for them, 11's not in the middle of the region. Of course, charge and burn. Yeah, 11's a little bit more work in the top lane. And uh, this tier 1 should be going down. The yeah. only way the marks can go down is if it starts to guard the manual to land the echo slam on the top. It's up. But I think it goes ahead of both of them. They're approaching the base from it. They have some like a big Cut the soul of just upon him. That's a lot of evasion. You know, this is one of those games where I think the MKD will be a bit more useful than the Oh, Sidelap, no! That's the death on the Weaver, and that's the push put you in a prop. I don't know if he can do it, he got tail down. That's the two-star come full down. He could turn around. Two-star come full down. Two-star come full down. Definitely, because you're playing, playing is like a team today. Stop you from oh, yeah. They've restarted their game. It's going to be a 75% list. Exactly as what they have planned. And especially some um, good picks by them. Lich King, Butterfly, who's uh, up in the and then Spray Breaker. Dyer's top shrine is under attack. Dyer's top shrine is under attack. The Dyer's top shrine is under attack. Dyer's top shrine has fallen. Wow. Uh, what's happening is because the target is going to the other guy teleports back to base and he's stuck in the middle of the game. Nice! Yeah, yeah, I see. 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 Uh, but think. they have Medusa who's playing mid lane. Mm -hmm. Okay. Zarf. Okay. Um, he's Sean playing not he's as well as he's expected to be. He needs to farm. I mean, more gold. Right now, Sean is not uh, in the face of He does that the now. Crucial the game. He's doing that. Don't get the thing. I don't think that he wants to take that. 
Just maybe walk up with the Medusa and the Drow and probably try and pound away at the buildings and see what happens. They're gonna try and take down a tier 2. This should fall rather rapidly. And uh, look at Mage and uh, Dark to work with the tier 2. Honestly, I think this is the time where they can just go and finish the game themselves. I mean, they... Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Are Radiant using echolocation? Got a hook to control him uh, with the charge. Oh, and then the strike is going on. It's going down that building. Keep the duration of the game. We have it on stage. I'll take that. Yes! MKB man, without a doubt, you get the MKB for yourself. This is... I, I, I think it was... No? I mean, just an ambition to really get it. Look at it, look at it. My level is gone in. It's not the other option. It's gone in the... 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 It's just retreated. Moonlight had it been popped. If... If the Yotas end up losing this fight, they could possibly lose the game later on. Look at Zaki clearing the creep wave all by himself with that. I think he's got like a bot. Lakhan coming out. Lakhan on cooldown. Zaki's too much right now. There's nothing they can do to him at this moment. Look at this. Probably regenerates quickly enough that he doesn't have to bother about taking this couple of more hits. The link of spear regen is helping him out. You can see a desperate attempt being made here to try and reach high ground. It's probably just going to push a loud I don't think they can. And if the Earthshaker gets a hot piece of fish up, maybe the could be one who initiated. Maybe you go in with the green mic and link in the Brow Ranger. That should keep her at bay. And of course, if you can keep your body next to the Brow Ranger, that will disable the last ship as well. But no. We've got uh, a massive push coming in from the bottom lane. You can see the level moving there. To deal with this for now. Top lane. And, uh, still uh, trying to find a way into uh, the enemy lane. Still struggling uh, to somehow reach high ground here. Rumiza. Up a the the It seems as if uh, the others have had enough. Sean even pops in BKB. Charge on the 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 for the I'm not committing it while Elspeth came with the doom is pushing back to Medusa. Major turns around and look at him. 
just a fun to do. The Skadi, the cross arrows are just too much. And Kale is eventually going to be brought down. The Doom melee thing is smart when they're going in for more. There's a quick cyclone onto the Weaver. The Enchant Totem perfectly timed. You got the Fisher on the ground. You got Detection as well. The Aegis has been taken away. And they've surrounded the Weaver here. Shondi trying to spray away under cover the security. Best Detection when you need it. The Yodas don't have any, but Maedro is on the hunt. He senses that the Lich is nearby, but he's got no vision. In fact, it seems as if Shondi as well as the rest of the Yodas are just Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Beautiful stuff coming up to the uh, Yeah, it's something we spoke of that as the game goes later and later. The Yoda just get incredibly strong. They're the ones who scale better into the lake in Medusa. There's no limit to how ridiculous this hero can get into the lake. In. Got a butterfly complete along with that cardi, and she's actually spoiled for choice there in terms of itemization. Top lane, Arrow Phoenix on the left. Perfect. Dyer's bottom tower is about to flounder. Shondi's now Welcome going for that MKB. You're watching his cipher and as Fortnite. You're done them lost the ages. The I've taken the lane of barracks. They're struggling to find a way to put an end to this game. Duck. Uh, Hold on. Oh, Easy. Okay. What? Oh, what? Oh, my team fun. Just come at the camp. Okay, team to me is fun. Uh, okay. And uh, what was one net worth lead has slid back down to 5,000. Three arrows. One of them does connect with the middle of the game. He breaks the link and spare, but it's not going to be done. He does this tag, but he's a whole lot of damage. He popped the refresh off without committing the doom. So on the other side of the map, though, you got Shondi trying to split the game. Quickly gave off by Shondi. Oh, so you lost that? Yeah, it's about a 12 minutes time. Good game while Blade comes out and panics. Oh my god, what is happening? But in a big ass forward, when a marksman would have given it back, what is happening? Oh, I can't say. Zulu Shadow. But as we see right now, she has made three very important items okay. in the inventory. One's called a Lincoln Spear, one's a Butterfly. He's a uh, comfortable dealing what with the Kings' Fancy. Ah, so that so completed me only. Arrow, not arrow, a sword. Okay. And the third one is some sort of. Invisibility! Red in color. Very shady. What do you mean you you're a big you're an expert? Shandy, it was known. That detection though, killing the drone is a but difficult is, task for Shandy. So like what was one split for Shandy has come to the Yodas back now? I I say the Yodas, but Shandy is still here by himself. He needs to be careful. Like no, Earthshaker was nearby. Okay, does not work with Pashu. Still can't close the gap. A golden blade. Eleven. And a phenomenal start in the early game, but it's all those up. Early maneuvers, deep fucking uh, enemy there once. Yeah. I'm thinking months of kills are made. Yeah. So the effectiveness uh, started, started to uh, like said, slowly yeah. fall yeah. off. Yeah. Still, After the Yodas are searching for a way to breach the enemy high ground. Yeah, you can't listen to the question. Yeah. I was listening to the question. Three arrows, one of them just connected the partner. Stolen by Pashu, Pashu lifts up Latif Saddam Hussein. Two feet to throw, forced to pop up, pop up. And I'm sure that mech coming out from Akli and the survivor is shot here though. He's the rat in the middle of all of it. The cockroach that they have to deal with. Now the three arrows. Now they connect, Red goes in, he's had enough, they want to bring down the lid. Kale comes in, he pops the shoot on Zard, Red Link, and he's got the lid. He's still paying to control in anyone, they have no detection, and without that, Red can't really lock down the Mirana. Good stuff coming up to the Yodas here. Slow but painful seats that's resulting in them securing objectives and 11 charges in the battle. They've gone up the Rubik, no doom to the Yodas, and 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 the
pushing it, pushing them back. He's actually got it, got it. He wants the lift by Kane. He's all by himself. He's eventually going to go down and get the extra slammy in the well. They're turning their lift into an 11, who brings down the Earth Shaker first. Chain front does a world of damage, but the Weaver ends up falling on the other side of the map. Two tier threes fall for the marksman. And somehow they hold on to the high ground. I'm not really sure what he's up to. Milana's got that MKB not going uh, for that study that we were assuming that she would pick up. Um, like Claudex has mentioned, that MKB is going to allow her to hit structures. However, Dota 2 may be something that can happen, so you Dota 2 on U Cypher, Naya Sport, Naya Superstar. Mid lane. Pushes out coming oh, through from the marksman, marksman here. <laughs> I never, I've been helping the marksman. I really do like, I mean, he just let Mage pound away on the tier 3. He can bring it down and how Red goes in with the clap, pushing back at the end. Be careful with the arrow. Good catch and buyback are available. Three arrows. None of them can next. He needed buyback coming out from the Weaver. A bet now on the Weaver can pass the Yoda. A lot of that buyback is more than enough to force the marksman to retreat. Mainzer just charges across the bottom lane while uh, Shanti, along with the rest of the boys, are marching down mid. Oh, the Rubik, he's been caught. Didn't have the blink, but has the ghost scepter. He tried to TP out Rana, though, with the arrow. It shows that his TP was cancelled. Oh, secures the kill on the Pachu. 71 seconds without a Rubik. He just marches to the rush pit. Okay, solar crash. Should be an easy and quick rush on. Hopefully, uh, this time around we see a little more judicious use of a uh, use of that repair talk. No contest just here coming up from Marksman Red is moving towards the rush pit, doesn't have his team in the vicinity. The swarm comes through. No yeah, then he got up. It is on Sean D11. In fact, goes into the charge. He's gone on towards Red. Red didn't have the opportunity to blink out and push us on the back. 11 and the rest of his boys. Another strike. One another strike all the way onto the high ground. While made with the double damage drone, trying to rat to the best of his abilities. He's got the axe after so this one allow him to clear waves a lot quicker. Gonna DP out. Continuously keeping the bottom wave pushed out simply because they're lacking um, I mean they're lacking a little bit of coordination and detection. These are two of the huge problems uh, for the Yildas here. They're giving the draw once again too much space. Uh, to just be split pushing away to a hard skip death. Come on, it, it, it's a draw, it's not an anti-mage. If, if it was an anti-mage doing that, it's somewhat understandable. Because, well, he's a tricky hero to bring down, but it's just a draw with a shadow blade. However, mage though with, uh, with that little bit of deep skipping does manage to buy her team some time. The time, I mean, it, it, it's the only thing uh, that the Yodas have been allowed to, uh, it's, it's the only thing that the marksmen have been allowed since the mid game. Is it enough though? Have Mage as well as Zark and the Medusa got enough to deal with the rest of the Yodas? And look at this, Zark. He, he's actually considering a Divine Rapier. This could all end so badly for the Yodas. I'm not sure they have any clue what's going on. I didn't see Zark for the longest time on my screen. I'm sure they haven't either. Where is the courier? Okay, so it, it's actually horrible if he... I, what's the plan? If, don't you want to purchase the Divine Rapier before the fight so that you win the fight and then end the game? I mean, now he's given it away. They see the Radiance probably in his backpack. Okay. Mirana got in the trees, manning up with the draw. He's got back up those. That's because he comes in. Mirana 
pops one leap, pops another. But look at this, the charge from 11. It's huge, the corner made. They will bring him down. Itachi got once again brought down without the buyback. 11 on point with these charges. And now the Mirana as well as 11 and Kayla are going to push down the bottom lane while Shanti is going to attempt to do the same across the other side of the map. The range barracks are falling, the many barracks under siege as well. Maid trying to down just to push them back. Not sure if it's picking up 11 as well as Kayla could just run right in and be a nuisance for them. While Shanti focuses another set of barracks. He's got 80 seconds of time lapse of cooldown in 10. Another lane of barracks is all that stands between the Yodas and Victory. 11 going but then it's the clap. Sukuji are coming up to me which means that she retreats for the time being but they lift 11 and toss it back in. I mean that's an endo shenanigan. The endo clap is there. It's not really connecting on anyone. It's just entirely set up a kill on 11 and that kill is falling as well. A quick buyback coming from 11. Boom. Cyclone in the air while the Zark runs down the Mirana with a little bit of resistance from the Panda and brings her down. 61 minutes in, Yodas have finally scored another lane of barracks. And Zah is getting close to the to that Divine Rapier. Devil damage! Wait, where does he go from here? Mm. I mean, I... I'd like to see an assault, an AC. It's some form of effective HP. It's gonna help versus uh, both the Weaver and the Mirana. Eleven is gonna be the second item of uh, second key item of the game since his uh, Albert early on. He wants to go in. The stomp is there. He pops the link. He pops the doom on the road. He's gonna run down that road. Shanti going in. He's trying to keep the draw alive, but Kale doesn't care. He brings her down. Shanti's gonna respect the damage. He's gonna time lapse and run away. 11 in the midst of battle. Pops his blade mail. Soaks up a whole lot of damage. But the real victory here is that they managed to bring down the draw. And what not? Well, they lost the doom. They lost the spirit breaker. However, both of them. Excuse me, only the Doom has buyback. And it seems as if the marksmen have had enough. They're marching down the mid lane. Medusa with a Divine Rapier and then Mentry. But that's the buyback. I mean, actually TP back home for the time being. Sandy is uh, queued up uh, the MKB and has more than enough gold for the MKB as well as uh, buyback if he wants to purchase it. Marana, MKB complete uh, on route to a Manta style, which is gonna help us with the silence coming out from the drogue, as well as uh, the drunken haze coming out from the panda. while Mirana pushes in through the mid lane. The Yodas, they have to make this Divine Rapier work in their favor. Excuse me, the Marksmen, they have to make this Divine Rapier work in their favor. Arms for the dead. You know what? Even though the Yodas have a 5,000 net worth advantage, I'm kind of leaning towards the Marksmen on this one. Dire are standing I, I, I mean, for I enemies. really don't know how to put this into words, but... It's just going to take one team fight and I still feel that the marksmen are somehow going to find a way to recover in this game. Sanaba. Top lane, um, he'll, uh, I think that was And, uh, he's killed up the Necro books. We, right now, they just want to throw bodies at, uh, the top lane of Barracks.
Lana has completed the hurricane pike, even consumes a moon shard. So, it's pretty much at max capacity here. Look at that mana. Stolen by Pashu. Not sure if it's gonna be enough. A golden thread. Get a little bit of vision going. If we get vision, I'm actually a bit surprised that neither side has decided to pick up a gem. Especially the Yotas. They do so well to have one right now. Control the map, squeeze uh, the marksman even better on top of the base. And almost always have detection when you go hunting for the ghost. Hitachi God, I mean, we've seen a couple of instances where his lockdown was crucial in bringing down Mirana, but we haven't really seen those hugely impactful Echo Slam team fights just yet. All these codes are just getting fatter and fatter. But I think Medusa with the Divine Rapier pretty much trumps all. So, into the arrow. Not enough lockdown yet for the arrow to connect. Tony just waiting on the side here. Looking for that opportunity to drop on the base. Well, Milan is the top lane push. I mean, one of the problems that uh, the Yoda will face is they try to slowly siege uh, and pretty much attempt to rat uh, out the marksman is that both the draw with an accept and Medusa with split shot and a divine rapier can deal with mega creeps rather easily. I mean, excuse me, super creeps rather easily. This is exactly what they need to possibly end. I'm not saying it's going to be enough, but it's definitely going to help them go higher. The prize is mine. Once again, it seems as if uh, the monster is their own too late to this. We've got Idris um, on the Weaver, Cheese on the Mirana. I assume Kale is holding on to that refresher shot. Shondi could at least push out a TP here. I mean, force the draw to TP back home. Yeah, I'm going to do just that. I mean, anyway, we just decided to have enough to TP back home. Pushing down the mid lane. And we're not going to connect on to Zark. Moonlight that Shadow submitted. They could walk into their base and look for the fight instead. There is a dire sentry though. So they've got to be careful of that. 11 walks in. Needs to be careful. Can actually, by the Rubik and the Urchik are rather easily. Acme trying to walk up. But uh, the marksmen, they're no pushover. They've got detection. They've got what they need to ensure that the Yotas don't run any sneaky plays such as that one. Sean Lee is going to the top lane. 11 chilling mid. Someone should help Dyer's top therapy. They've rolled him with the fissures, they've taken him in the air, they've been But look at this, Latif Saddam was saying, he's taken a tear for a fuck's sake, and may as well, he's just a little bit of a deep end. His Lincoln's here triggered, while elsewhere, the Lincoln's have. They popped the Prime and Split, they won the Doom, they're doing their best with the menu, so they focus the Doom, and they're the man who's stolen Centaur, provides a little bit of control onto the menu, so. They still have the belly barracks standing, but the split is wearing off, and they haven't done too much with it. Zuck wants to go in, Kale tries to pop the blink, he's using two more to the blink, he's got the blink controller for a little while, but he just runs up, he pushes away at the dude who plopped his blade tail and hopes run away. Sean Lee going back in, trying to bring down the belly barracks, they're pretty much landing them at the final here. 
but Mirana to not so lucky. Ends up going down. Mm -hmm. And again, they get a man to control the Medusa. The Primal Split still coming through from red, and the Boulder is going to push back Shanti. They've committed the ages, they've failed to secure the Penny Barracks, while Kane goes in for round two. And Zoom number two upon the draw. Not sure if they had enough to bring her down. Round two only stole the Centaur Storm, and 11 will eventually go down, but the Melly Barracks will fall as well. Shanti comes in the game, he secures the retreat. All they lost the was Pete and Mirana, and they finally ended up taking the lane of Heavy Barracks. Mega creeps for the marksman here, but with the Divine Rapier upon Medusa, I'm pretty sure that they can deal with it. Kale needs to be careful though. He's all our bind side, and he gets lifted from the ground. It's the ultimate latest. That's right, he's going to but he's got buyback. Shondi, Marty, he's in mid lane. Blocked on up to the Medusa, but he's not as bad. And with the Sachi God coming in, the Fisher is more than enough control to bring down the Weaver. Those stars might now have to expand, expand, excuse me, buyback on Nexus. And this could be the chance for the marksman to put an end to this game. Kale by his back, Mirana respawning in the bit. At the very least, the Mirana. Might have to um, buy back. Ah, heck, scratch that. She's respawning in it. This could be a lane of barracks for the master. You haven't seen for the first time in 70 seconds. In 70 minutes. They just want the prime split. The earth partner does a whole lot of damage. The lift comes out from the right. They're trying to hold on. Mirana's back. He was back as well. The first arrow will miss him. Move towards the Mirana. He immediately pops a BKB. While Maze focuses the lift. He tries to run away with the Glimmer Cave. So he is committed. 11 in the middle of the battle. Yes, but oh, Mirana. She's been controlled. She's been brought down. They move on. 11. That's 124 seconds without the Spirit Breaker and the Marksman they're keeping back home. Because back home, the Mirana, along with the Lich, are going for the throne. Maid thankfully has DOD level 2. He's trying to focus the Weaver. The others are committed to try and bring down the Mirana. All they might get was the Lich. But the Lich is a very good state cross. They're moving towards the Mirana, who's four stops away. Excuse me, uses a Hurricane Pike and leaves the hell out of there. While Zark. On the other side of the map, securing Radiant another lane of barracks. This game has gone into utter complete chaos. And Shondi is still alive. They forced out a buyback on the draw, but I think they're going to be more than comfortable to win with these mega tails. The real issue is that no structures in their lane, but look at this. Zark wants to go for the kill. He's all by himself. Kale doesn't have the do. Triggers the link, it swaps the do. And with the defusal blade in the odd case, they should be able to bring down the Medusa and retrieve the Divine Rapier. Yotas still fighting in this game. Medusa, well, she's respawned if she wants to. She'll just pick up another Divine Rapier and go once more. Tensely contested up there. The Yodas, they did lose two lanes of barracks, but they could just march down both lanes and possibly put an end to the game. Medusa did buyback, and I'm, I'm actually going to take a look at buyback status. The only one who's holding on to any buyback right now is the Brewmaster. So, a fight for either side, which could result in casualties, is possibly the end of the game for them. Radiant are scanning for enemies. Medusa has uh, gone for the blood thorn, and if one divine repair wasn't enough, maybe two uh, could possibly be exactly what she needs to end the game. Who's on base defense duty? This Tachi God. Okay. I like the choice. I mean, he might be able to kill one of them, especially if Mage is nearby. And Mage is just looping over to the top lane. Mirana, holding on to that Divine Rapier. Endurance <laughs> Pashu does have the chain of the stolen mode. Invisibility! Can't be just being patient. What? Um... Hold on. Ha! Okay, so Shondi has 
picked up a divine rapier. Uh, I, I didn't know how this would happen. I'm not sure when he picks this up, but yeah, Shandi's holding on to a divine rapier. Mirana has one himself, so two divine rapiers on the side of the Yoda. Zark has been picked up his gear. Well, he's getting closer and closer to one. And yeah, the first gem of the game, 75 minutes in, somewhat felt that uh, vision was really key for them to hold on to this game. It seems as if the Yoda just want to wait out Roshan number five. Yeah. Kill him once more, probably pick up ACs and then maybe go and end the game. Illusion. The, uh, <coughs> no one the on this side mine. of uh, the marksman except for the panda has five enemies. And um, I think he's gone for the minus 65 second private split cooldown. It's going to be a lot of control coming out from the panda. And um, it's going to amount to a lot more, especially since BKVs um, are now uh, lasting for shorter durations as we have the 6 minute mark. They're going to move into the rock pit. Ah, uh, going to mark I mean, Zark has picked up his Divine Rapier, but I don't know. If you don't get dashed, if all the others have to the control, and they're going to pretty much auto win and put an end to the game. They've just got to be careful of two crucial spells, the Echo Slam and the Stone Gaze. These could be the death of them. Allies. They're going to pop a Moonlight Shadow, pop the smoke as well, and try and move into the enemy base. Itachi got walking in. He's walked in deep. If I'm not mistaken, they do have detection. 11 being controlled. The arrow connects on the Zark. They're trying to focus down the Medusa maze, though. Providing good cover fire. Trying to bring down the dude. The stomp was there from the center. 11 being controlled. But look at this. Shondi, he's going for the throne along with the Mirana. Mirana focuses the throne. Well, gets brought down, but it doesn't matter. The Yodas have done it. They have put an end to the unstoppable winning spree coming out from the marksmen. Fantastic Dodas coming out from fantastic Dota coming out from the Yodas. Their early game looked sketchy. <laughs> No, that's go, you